What's up guys, ClutchFan37 here and today we're going to show you all of my lacrosse sticks. Um, it was highly requested by a bunch of people and has been for quite some time. And for some reason lots of people like to watch these videos. Uh, I know I still like to watch uh, people's collections of sticks. Um, now that I'm not playing consistently and I'm just playing men's league and whatnot, uh, I got rid of a lot of sticks. You know, I don't necessarily need to have two or three gamers and backups. And being the lacrosse nerd I am, I have collected quite the collection of stuff. So. Before I show it to you guys, um, I kind of have three or four certain groupings, I'd call them. I got a bucket of shafts right here next to me, or a bucket of sticks, which are just sticks that um, don't really have any resale value, don't really mean too much to me, uh, just things I've collected over the years that I have sitting around. If I have a buddy who ever needs a new shaft, I just offer him one of these. Uh, I string up a new stick and want to mess around with it, I go ahead and uh, typically will throw it on one of these shafts. Um, it's always nice to have a couple extra shafts. so. I'll show you those and from there uh, dive into everything else I have. So like I said, uh, just a random bucket of shafts and for starters, um, I'll just go ahead and dive into it. So right here I have an old Reebok 7K Smooth Grip uh, composite shaft. It was my nephew's, he left it here. Uh, he hasn't played lacrosse in quite some time, but it's uh, kind of cool. I mean he just left it at my house and I figured I'd throw it in my bucket of shafts in case he wants it or something happens. Then I have, I mean, we'll just do random stuff. Uh, String King A7150. This was sent to me from String King back when they first came out. Uh, pretty solid shaft. Uh, as many of you know, String King has three holes back here in the shaft that uh, pretty much any head fits on. So whenever I string up a head, this is usually my go-to. I used it for some time. It's got a tape butt end. Uh, the cork fell all the way into the shaft. No dents or dings or anything. Just any head fits on pretty much. So... That's where that bad boy comes in. Then I have uh, this. This is some old titanium. I think it was a brine. Yeah, it was a brine swizzle titanium. No graphics left to it. Uh, a couple of dents and, and dings. Uh, slightly bent, but it's cool to have a full titanium shaft. I think when it comes box season, uh, I may give it to a buddy of mine or a defender just so he has something super strong and durable. Uh, I've had this for so long. I don't even know where I got it, to be honest. And from there, a Reebok 9K shaft. This is the first uh, shaft from Reebok that featured the three holes in it. Pretty cool collector's item. Uh, not many people liked it. It pretty much started the downfall of Reebok before they uh, dropped out of the lacrosse world. Just cool to have. Uh, I'll never use this in a game. I don't think many people would, but it's just kind of nice to have one of these sitting around. Uh, just kind of has some cool value. Me as a collector of gear, per se, I like to just get pretty much all the unique and weird things and this is definitely one of them. And I have a 10K shaft as well. This is the, I think it's the totem pole they called it. Same thing from Reebok. This one has five holes. So you got four here. One of the top where the uh, throat goes for the 10K head. Uh, got this from someone for a trade just because I thought it was cool and, and graphics are sweet on it. Same thing, just cool and unique to have. We'll just call it unique gear. I have a Tomahawk uh, Woody shaft. Tomahawk Lacrosse sent me. A handful of woodies way back in the day, and it's kind of cool to have a full wooden shaft. It's not hollowed out or anything. Just a cool little collector's piece, like most of these are. Next is my Throne Rift Day 1 Edition, uh, obviously broken. This is the Day 1 Rift, the Gold Limited Edition version. Uh, this has a lot of value to me because this is the first shaft I used in last night in my first game. Uh, Courtney Fleming, who played for the Black Wolves or was drafted and picked up by them, who was released at some point. Uh, he's the one, he threw a mean rap check on me in the tournament and snapped my stick in half. Um, so that's kind of cool to have. Obviously, I can switch out the carbon fiber piece. Uh, I plan on doing it, but at the same time, this shaft, just cool to have. I like the gold, and if I'm going to use a throw and rift, I'll probably get to use my all black one or whatever I have. I got a couple of those somewhere. So, cool to have because it's broken and it has a cool little unique backstory to it. Got a couple more here. So this is the Jewel Across Punisher. This is a circular shaft, uh, unbreakable. Uh, I think they sent this to me, and then I, I've given it to a buddy to use. I've messed around with it. I've broken sticks with it. This is just one of those super unique things that really has zero value in the lacrosse world anymore. Just really cool to have. It is 100% as unbreakable as possible. I mean, I took this to a tree in the backyard, and it held up right, perfectly. And it's also circular, which is unique and real weird. And 
I have an Under Armour SC1X deep hole. Uh, this is pretty much just used for men's league and fall league. Uh, I, I bring it to every game, throw a head on it, and you know it's it's men's league. It's summer league, you know, beer league. Someone wants to mess around and play long pull for a game, they have one. Uh, someone breaks a stick, I have an extra. Uh, it's also fun to mess around and throw a head on and chew with. And lastly, in the kind of random collection of random stuff, I have a full Reebok 10K shaft and head. This is the white and red version, obviously. It comes with the 10K head. I would never, ever use this in a game. This head and shaft combo is just horrible. But it's really cool to have, unique to me, because the stick itself is just so wild and out there that I want to have one just to string up, mess around with. Um, kind of cool. So that's just the random shaft collection, basically, and, and random stuff that doesn't really have a whole lot of sentimental value to me besides the thrown rift shaft and things that just cool to have and mess around with and give to buddies. Um, so that's the first kind of area of stuff I have. So next up in the corner of my room, I have this tall dresser, and as you can see, there's a whole bunch of random stuff with it. Instead of having my camera over here and kind of going through it, I'm just going to take everything off, sit back in the chair and show you guys, but this is kind of... Uh, the shrine, I call it, because all this stuff has some type of sentimental value to me. And it's stuff I collect over the years that I could potentially sell to the right people. But uh, just keep them, keep growing it, see where I can go with it. Um, so I'll show you those. So now diving into the shrine of heads that I have, or the heads from my shrine, I call it. I uh, just kind of keep it brief and give you a little history on some of them. Starting off, I have a Brian Edge Arrow. Uh, this thing is super old school. It's one of the first heads uh, that had the open sidewall. And what I like about this one is it's one of the very first heads that was ever factory marbled. For those of you who don't know, when they make heads black and white, um, sometimes the color pellets or plastic pellets that are black and white can mix. You get a cool marble effect, hence why ECD had the marble mirages for a while. Uh, this is one of the first heads ever marbled um, that's factory done. Got this from, I think my stepdad coached a high school, and then the assistant coach had a bag of old gear he donated. Uh, they switched over to the uh, college rules to where they couldn't use the pinched heads, and I decided to keep this. So it doesn't have a lot of value to me. It's one of those things that uh, maybe the right collector would want. But for me, having one of the first marbled heads strung up with a classic five-diamond traditional and super old school is unique and cool to have. Next, I have a Burn X from the Mark Matthews video. Obviously, Mark Matthews being one of the people that uh, a lot of people try to string their sticks up with. Uh, his pocket, a lot of people use it, uh, variations of it. And then when he switched over to uh, using the Burnt X head in the uh, indoor league, his string job is so different and unique from what he used to use. Made the video of it, and one thing I keep because it's a lot of fun to play around with. Uh, zero whip, zero hold, super quick release, but you guys have probably seen this if you've seen it on my YouTube channel. Uh, just one of those things where I'm just going to keep it for a while, and it's fun to mess around with. Next, I have an Under Armour Charge 2U. This was the first stick I ever used in a box game. Uh, I used this for a whole men's league box season. I uh, just had a lot of fun with it. I like the Under Armour head. It has original Hero Mesh, not the 2.0. Four straight, same thing. I like to throw this on a shaft and, and play with it sometimes, but pretty sentimental to me because, you know, this is the head I used when I fell in love with box lacrosse and what I used uh, for my first season. I think I used it for two seasons, actually. Pretty cool to have. Uh, I really enjoy it. And just kind of shows, you know, how my string has evolved for box and pocket wise. Uh, cool to have. And then next for the stuff that has a lot of meaning to me, this is the Element Onset head. For those of you who don't know, one of my best friends made this head from the ground up all by himself, and then he gave me a handful of them to test out. And this is one of the final versions. I uh, got together with him at his house one day, and we dyed ours up. I went with a black and white and neon yellow or volt marble effect to it. Strung it up. Uh, obviously, Element Lacrosse is not around anymore, so it's cool to have something from that that uh, can look back on and use and mess around with. And it's always cool to support your friends and, and see where they go. And you know, the fact that he made this on his own is is pretty unique and cool to me. So, Element Onset Head, keeping this for as long as possible. Uh, thrown fiber mesh in it, just fun string job. Uh, always fun to play with this because the head is unique and uh, hopefully now that he's with Signature, Signature will do something and bring something similar to the market that's like the element onset. Next up for more kind of sentimental stuff with things I've collected, I'll show you guys kind of my, my OG collection, I'll call it. So for stars, I have a Gate Asylum head. This thing is wild and crazy. Uh, there was a moment 
or there's a little span of time where Gate was really doing some weird, funky things with heads, and the Asylum is one of those heads. I mean, if you look, the sidewall is crazy, the pinch, um, the stuff is thick. Just a cool head. I got a silent swap for like 20 bucks. Uh, really, really fast pickup for me for sure. Uh, just super unique head. I never used one growing up. In fact, I think they were on the market for like three months before they got pulled. Uh, just an old school, old school gate lacrosse head. Next, I have a uh, Blade OG. Not the OG Blade. This is the remake uh, when Warrior found the mold and used the newer plastic or older plastic, whatever you want to call it. Um, just cool to have. I mean, I've tried to sell this a couple times, and obviously, with all the face-off heads coming out, like the 2F, the Weapon X, uh, Dual 2, these heads just aren't really a hot commodity anymore. Um, it's brand new, has a tag on it, and I've never taken face-offs, but Blade OG and OG Blade were always heads that people collected and, and held on to and sold for a bunch of money. Um, don't really know what I'm going to do with it. It's just kind of cool to have. Uh, they only made, these were limited edition, they only made so many of them, and I got one. They also came out at 150 bucks, which was wild. Then I got a Warrior Helix. Um, same thing, never really used this growing up. Just a cool head, it's unique. It has uh, crazy face shape and flares going on with it all over the place. Um, this has been recycled through me and a couple of my buddies a couple different times, and somehow I ended up with it. So, Warrior Helix, pretty cool to have. Uh, if you grew up and you ever used one, these were a uh, very unique head to say the least. Strung up horribly, pocket always came out janky, but kind of cool. Next up, I have a brand new Warrior OG Evo Pro. Still has the tag on it, the $89 price mark. Uh, this is my favorite head growing up. I think when I really got into lacrosse and learning the sport, uh, the first head that I ever upgraded to from my um, beginner stick was the Warrior OG Evo Pro. Use this a whole bunch. Me and my best friend Sam uh, went through these and used them consistently all throughout middle school and even a little bit in high school. Um, so finding one brand new with the tags on it was an uh, in instant steal for me, um, which is pretty sweet. Next up, a Warrior Stiffy. Uh, this was another head that really cool to me. I have some weird pocket strung up in it. Um, this is one of those heads that as I got more into lacrosse and got more nerdy, uh, having a titanium reinforced head was unique to me. They came out at 130 bucks. People, uh, you go to tournaments and Warrior had these in these clear glass cases displaying them, which was kind of cool. Really goofy and silly. The head wasn't very good, but first titanium reinforced head, a head I used religiously for a year or so growing up. Cool to have. Uh, I got this from my buddy Tyler Bordner, a T Bird. Uh, pretty much brand new condition. I think it is brand new. I think it's just a little dirty. Uh, Warrior Stiffy. I'll probably take this pocket out and throw in a different pocket at some point, but cool to have. And lastly, for the kind of brand new heads, I have a Brian Clutch High School, also brand new. Clutch Fanatic 37, the name came from. Uh, when Brian came out with the Clutch heads, they came out with like 10 different colors, and at one point in my life I had one of every color, uh, hence the name. Cool to have. Clutch is one of the best heads ever made, uh, especially back in the day, and having a one that's brand new. Uh, definitely want to throw something cool in it, maybe dye it up. Uh, but we'll see. So, can't be Clutch Fanatic if I don't own a Clutch at some point and have one consistently. So, those are the kind of the brand new heads I have that have some type of value and are cool and kind of OG in a way. Um, so, there's that. So, next up from the Shrine, I have four heads that have uh, a little more value to me personally. Uh, that's why they're a whole different section. So, get into those. For starters, I have an OG... Warrior Evo Pro. This one is cool to me because uh, I found it for like $10 uh, at a plate again. Great condition and uh, this is one that I just dyed up and, and used a little bit. So it's got a Joker theme. For those of you who don't know, I love the Joker. Uh, why so serious on the scoop? As you can see back here, uh, or hopefully you can see, I don't know with my camera. Lots of bleeding because they have that massive thick lip scoop, uh, which I think is kind of cool looking. It also doesn't affect me. I don't really play with this one a whole lot. Bunch of ha-has down here, strung with Throne Fiber 2. This one has a Matt Strebel replica pocket. Matt Strebel is one of my favorite players growing up. I love the way he shot. Um, he used his head pretty much entirely. Uh, he retired for a couple years and came back to league for a handful of games. And uh, with all the new heads and stuff out there, he was still rocking the OG Evo Pro. So I'm strung with his replica pocket. Pretty cool to me. This thing has a lot of whip, a lot of yank. I've used this a couple times in some summer league games. It's cool and fun to have, but I just like it. You know, one of my favorite heads, dyed up, 
strung up, new mesh, old school pocket. Uh, just cool to have. I enjoy this one a lot. Next, I have the Mark II F, the raw condition, or edition, not condition, raw condition, raw edition, the bone, whatever you want to call it. Uh, this was one that Shrinking sent to me. They said, hey, we know you're not a face-off guy, but will you review it for us or at least check it out? I said, absolutely. They sent it to me, and at first, uh, a lot of people were against the bone colorway, but now that it's a limited edition head, so many people want it. Uh, the Rebel offense and defense people have seen in the bone colorway. So it made, made cool cool splash in the cross one. I hope to see more companies doing the bone colorway. But this one's cool because uh, I like to mess around and have face-offs sometimes in the men's leagues that I play in. If I have a buddy that wants to face-off, I have this with me. And uh, this is the first face-off head I ever reviewed. And, you know, being the bone colorway straight from String King before they were released in the bone colorway is cool to me to have. Um, big fan of this head. If I ever faced off, I'd probably use this. Weapon X, uh, I don't know. I'm not a face-off guy. Next, I have my Epic Prequel. I did a carbon fiber dye job to it, or tried to. Dyeing something to look carbon fiber is a bit of a struggle, but this is back when Epic and I were, were pretty good friends. I used their shaft, their, their head, their gloves. They gave me good deals and all that stuff. And this was a stick that I took to my first last night tournament ever and used it. Uh, scored my first goal in last night, uh, and my only goal that year with this head. Used it for all my box season, and just pretty cool to have, you know. Looking back on my second box season using this head, uh, then in last night that tournament using this head, pretty cool to me. Um, I, I, I pinched it and, and changed the shape of it because the original shape of the Epic prequels are uh, pretty rough, at least in my opinion. Um, pretty interesting pocket too, but scored my first goal in New York with this in a box tournament that uh, was showcased nationwide and cool to have. And lastly, I have my girlfriend's J. Cole head. Um, obviously she doesn't play men's lacrosse, she doesn't play lacrosse, never played lacrosse, but she loves J. Cole. Obviously if you are dating the Clutch Fanatic 37, you're going to have some type of lacrosse stuff going on in your life. Um, but she's a big John Grant Jr. fan, for whatever reason. I mean, I think most people are. Uh, big J. Cole girl, so they're up a J. Cole head, uh, Under Armour Charge to you. Four straight, uh, Hero Mesh with a John Grant Jr.-esque pocket to it. Um, Cool to have. Uh, we usually throw this on a shaft if we ever go out and play, but regardless, uh, she doesn't want to keep it in her room, uh, so I keep it. Um, so that's the last head of the sentimental stuff that I keep and has meaning to me. Next up, I'll show you guys kind of my, my hard goods stuff, uh, helmets and gloves I've collected over the years that I like, um, or sentimental value, whatever it may be. Starters, I have an old school Reebok Rochester Nighthawks helmet, uh, no cage. I may throw on a cage just to make it look cool and complete it, but uh, this is given me from a player or two. I dyed up a couple heads for them, and to thank me, they offered me an old school helmet. I said, sure. Uh, Nighthawks, my favorite indoor team as of right now. Huge fan of them. Uh, having this is pretty cool to have. For one, because I dyed heads for some of the players there, and for two, uh, it's just old school and, and cool look. I kind of like this, you know, the actual Nighthawk logo on both sides, but there's that. Continuing with the Nighthawks being my favorite team, I have a pair of Epic Integra gloves. Um, basically brand new, team issued. You can see here it has the Nighthawks logo on it. I believe I got these in a trade from someone on Instagram uh, last year or two years ago, but the Integras are my favorite gloves as of right now. Um, the gate gloves are creeping up on them for sure in my mind. But the Integra gloves are sweet. I use the Integra gloves uh, for the last year two years. So having a pair of Nighthawks gloves is really cool. Uh, pretty much brand new too and a uh, cool cool little piece to, to have and look at and sometimes use. From there I have my high school uh, team issued gloves. These are the Warrior Superflies. Um, back in the day, 10, 12 years ago, these were the coolest gloves out. Uh, they were 180 bucks or 200 bucks, which is absurd for a pair of gloves back in the day. Nowadays maybe not so much. Um, high school team colors, they didn't have the logo because I didn't think, uh, I don't think back in the day if you got custom gloves, the, the custom logo was an option. I think that's relatively new. Um, these are cool. One of my favorite pairs of gloves of all time. Got to pay homage to my high school, plus they're USA colored. Uh, these, uh, occasionally I bust them out for men's league, but most of the time they just kind of sit in my room. From there, I have a pair of team-issued Gate Canada gloves. Uh, my girlfriend got these for me for Christmas uh, two years ago. Um, I think she got them from Sideline Swap off of a player, 
and these were cool. I worked with Gate Lacrosse for the World Games when they were here. These are the gloves they were using. Um, I tried as hard as I could to pull some strings and get a pair. Never could. Um, Gate Recon gloves. I like the gloves a lot. They were great. Um, this is right before Gate Lacrosse went under. And having a pair of team issued Canada gloves is way too cool. You know, it's got the Canada, our Team Canada logo up there. It says Canada right here, red, white, and black. Uh, really cool. These are gloves that I don't think I'd ever wear in a game because uh, I'm not good enough. But really cool gift, one of my favorite gifts she's ever given me. And uh, I'm a big Team Canada guy, so it fits perfectly for that. From there, we'll go uh, helmets. This is a Cascade Pro 7, the Chesapeake Bayhawks, not the Baltimore. Um, this was cool because my dad and I went to a recruiting camp back in high school out in Maryland. It was the Warrior Diamond Showcase. And one of the days we just stopped by the Bayhawks office. Uh, I was talking to one of the guys and he said, hey, we have uh, an extra non-player non used uh, breast cancer helmet. You know, if you guys want to buy it, we'll give you guys a good price on it. So this is what my dad got me for my birthday, and this was the helmet I used uh, in my first year of college. Uh, this was the helmet I was wearing when my grandfather passed away, which was a very tough day for me. And a uh, big Bayhawks fan. The, the breast cancer helmets are always cool, white and pink. Uh, I've had family members pass away from breast cancer, so having a favorite team, old school helmet, and then a you know, breast cancer team issue that we got in Baltimore. Uh, pretty cool. So this is a helmet that I will always keep, never sell it. And then next, I have the Chesapeake Bayhawks USA game, uh, Cascade R. Yeah, this is the R. This one's cool. This one they had a bunch of uh, eBay auctions for, team issued, uh, players use it for the game. This one's signed by Joe Walters. Joe Walters being one of my favorite players in the outdoor league. Same thing, big Bayhawks fan. This helmet's really cool. One of the first helmets with the uh, pearl white face mask. Bayhawks here. Uh, pretty self explanatory. So this one's cool. This one I did spend a decent amount of money on in a bidding war and won it. I decided I really wanted this helmet. Um, cool to have. And lastly, of the stuff that's really cool in collectibles, I have a complete woody stick. Uh, this was made by T. Gabriel in, I believe it's the Mohawk Reservation? Yeah, Mohawk Reservation. Um, I've always wanted a completely wooden stick, you know, full woody. Didn't want to buy one from a company or manufacturer. I wanted to get one that was handmade. And my first year last night with my buddy Mitch, uh, we got to talking to this guy at the Woodstick Festival. Uh, really cool guy. Said a lot about you know the history of it. Spent a lot of time with us. And I figured I'd buy one that's handmade. Um, pretty cool. I messed with the string a bit and just kind of tweaked it. And this is a stick that at some point I want to hang up uh, whenever I get a house in my own or place. And it's, it's cool. You know, It's one of those things where I can take it out and go play with it and shoot with it. But also wall hanger. It's meant to be used. Uh, pretty cool. Uh, if you know the history of the sport and you've always wanted a wooden stick, I would suggest uh, if you can make it to the reservation or reach out to someone um, who hand makes these and pick one up because they're cool. They're unique. And my favorite part is this: they're, they're all handmade by him and they're not finished. Um, he doesn't go through and, and shape them all the same. He just shapes them and then cuts them and does stuff with it. So this one has kind of a unique shape and feel to it. My buddy Mitch also got one, and his and mine are made by the same person, but very different and unique, and that's what I like about it. So, complete Woody, T. Gabriel, it's got the boot lace, the brown leathers, cat gut, uh, it's got everything. Uh, this thing is really cool, and it's the box version, so it's a little tighter. I can play with this if I really wanted to. Uh, never using the game, of course, but messing around, passing, and shooting with it's always fun. So lastly, probably the point of the video that you guys all really want to see is my game sticks and just cool other little tidbits I have. Uh, for starters, I have an ECD Rebel, Gra Graphene, Rebel Graphene Offense Head. This was sent to me directly from ECD. Uh, they sent the head to me. They also put the gray striker or a gray zone tech mesh with it, and I strung it up. But what's cool about this one is, obviously when they release them, they're all limited edition. Uh, 1,000 offense ones, 500 defense ones, but when they send this to me, the engraving right here where the number is, it says CF37. And to me, that really stood out and is really cool. Um, I've never had my own personalized stick necessarily. And the fact that they went through the time to think about me, um, consider sending one to me, and then even branding it with the CF37 uh, trademark, logo, whatever you want to call it, is really cool. Um, Rebel has a great head. The graphene is a cool and unique and innovative thing. Um, 
Don't know if I'd ever use it because I don't want to damage it. I want it to stay as pristine as possible, but having my own personalized Rebel Graphene head is way too cool. Um, I can never thank them enough for everything they've ever done for me and sent to me and, and projects I've done for them. Next, I have this. This is a Halifax Thunderbirds Mark IIv. For those of you who don't know, Rochester Nighthawks, Halifax, uh, Indoor League stuff. All, all the Rochester guys who haven't been traded are most likely moving to play for Halifax. And being a big Nighthawks fan of some of the players and the team itself, I want to do something unique, uh, something different, and kind of potentially replace my gamer, which I'll show you towards the, the very end. But this is cool. I uh, just dyed up the Thunderbirds head before they even have a team or a jersey with them associated. Uh, Thunderbirds logo, sidewall Jedi top string up here. Uh, classic box pocket that I use, uh, which I'll show you guys in a later video. This is cool. I mean, it's for sale if anyone really wants to buy it, but I figured no one would be interested until the team actually is a team uh, and has players and jerseys and stuff. So we'll see what happens with that, but I have that here because once my actual gamer dies, that's probably going to replace it if no one picks it up at some point. Uh, easy as that. And lastly, we are at the part of the video that you guys probably all came to watch, which is my game sticks. Uh, like I said, I don't play religiously and year-round like I used to. I play year-round, but it's you know a game a weekend, eight games a season, maybe a tournament, so not as much. So when it comes to sticks, I don't really have a gamer and a backup until box season. I don't have the same stick. I just mess around, change it up, and use different things. So for starters, this is a String King Metal 2 155. I've had this shaft for pretty much ever since it ever came out. Uh, it has one big dent in it, but it's nothing too crazy. It just hasn't broken on me. But it's topped off with a STX profile head. And if you look at the pocket, it is a John Grant Jr. replica pocket. Um, old school hard mesh, four straight. Very unique. Uh, just paid a little bit of homage to John Grant Jr. Back when he was playing with the Nighthawks and using STX, he used the profile head. Pinched his up, straight up with hard mesh, and this is pretty much as close to the pattern as I could figure out. John Grant Jr. being one of the most uh, sought-after players and people string up their sticks and want to use his pocket because he's a magician. It's cool to have. This is one of those sticks I just bring around and shoot with me all the time. And, and if I ever want to go play wall ball and have fun, I use this because it's just so unique and has literally zero whip. Um, weird hold, but zero whip. Um, just a nice little homage to him. The profile head I had for years and years found it in a bin. I uh, remember John Grant Jr. used one for a while, way back in the day, and figured, why not string it up like that? So there's that. That's more or less my wall ball mess around with stick. And from there, uh, playing in men's league, there is now a two-point line in our league, and I'm very excited for that. So I don't use my box stick for outdoor because it doesn't have a lot of whip. It has a good hold, but, uh, you know, when I would shoot the ball, that stick's better for placement, so I want something that has more power to it. Um... Uh, so with that, I went with a String King A7150 shaft. Nothing too crazy about these shafts. Uh, I like them a lot. They're affordable and, and cheap when it comes to price range. Um, just one of those shafts I had in my bin that any head fits on. It's topped off with a Lakota U in the Volt colorway. Had this for a very long time. Got the JW1 Hero 2.0. Got the Sidewall Jedi Top String. Um, slightly altered. I think he does 10 diamonds. I do 9. From there, it has a Ryan Brown-like pocket. String it to the inside, of course, which I may do a video on, but it's Sidewall Jedi stuff. It's what he does. It's what he came up with, and I don't want to, uh, I don't want to do something and make him upset or, or take his thunder necessarily. Um, as you can see, the shooting strings are super loose. The pocket sits nice and high, and this thing absolutely rips. It has a lot of whip. Uh, it feels great when I'm shooting with it. I can pass with it. Uh, pretty cool head. So this is probably what I'll be using for men's league. Uh, two-pointer, uh, playing MIDI or attack, whatever it may be. Uh, this is probably my go-to. Or maybe do something else from Men's League. Uh, maybe get a new head and dye it up. But until then, this is what I'm using. And when I'm not using this, and I really want the most uh, hashtag unfair advantage as possible, which is Sidewall Jedi's go-to, I am rocking a gold Forest Elite shaft. Um, huge shout to them. They sent this to me uh, a couple of weeks ago. And I really want to do a review on it. And I owe them a review. And uh, like always, I want to use it in the game and see how it holds up, but it's gold, it's very lightweight, big fan of it, great shape, great feel. I believe Sesh Strings has uh, something going on with them where this may be like his uh, gold shaft or something, uh, I'd have to ask. But it's topped off with the OG Evo Pro. If you've watched the entire video, you know that this is my favorite head of all time. I have 
four of them now, three of them. Um, same style pocket. I got the Saddle Jedi top string. String it to the inside, Ryan Brown-esque pocket with a nice mid-high-ish pocket. Um, super loose shooting string here, a little, little tighter down here. Lots of hold, lots of whip, feels great. But the coolest part about this is being a men's league, there is no stick rules. Um, being a high school head, strung to the inside, I am the world's uh, potentially biggest cheater when it comes to men's league. So you can see, pocket death, legal. That thing is not going anywhere. So I'm playing attack, dodging one-handed. You're not getting the ball for me. Um, I think it's cool. My biggest concern, though, is if I'm playing with this as a midi or even an attack mid, if I catch a ball and it goes into the throat, the chance of it getting really stuck to where I can't dislodge it could be high. But, you know, if you do a nice little power cradle, it'll pop right back where you need to. Um, so this will probably be the stick I use the most. Uh, it just depends on how things go. If not, this stick is so much fun to shoot with because it absolutely rips. Um, so those are the sticks for outdoor, and lastly, uh, I assume most of you guys know my game stick, but it is a String King Composite Pro Shaft, 155 gram, uh, black obviously. Big fan of String King's shafts and heads. Uh, ever since the 2V came out, I've used that religiously. Metal 2 I used, the Composite Pro, once they came out, I had to get one for box. Um, just don't have to worry about it denting or bending on me. Being Composite Shaft and having pretty much no flex, it's super strong and durable. Really excited for that. Occasionally in box, I get stuck on defense or transition, so I'm going to need something strong and durable. From there, I have my Nighthawks 2V head. I have used this thing religiously for probably two years now. Um, I think this is the first 2V they sent me that I died up. Um, string it up with 4S, uh, 4 straight, different top string than I normally do, which I could do a video on at some point. Uh, my box pocket with the whole you know, sidewall stringing, it's nice and baggy, sits low, sits high. Catches on the four shooting string, doesn't have a whole lot of whip. Uh, I'll do a video on, on the whole shooting box thing and, and why I think you should have less whip, but that's it, guys. Um, that is my collection of stuff for the most part. There's some other miscellaneous things that you know, I don't use or whatever it may be, uh, things I have for sale. Um, so, yeah, I'm sure it's going to be a lengthy video. There's a lot to show, and obviously, being the person I am, I like to talk. I'm very passionate about gear. And pretty much everything I own has some type of story to it as to why it is in my collection. Um, so let me know down below what you guys think. Uh, if you have a favorite stick from my collection, uh, if you guys are into collecting sticks, you know, what's your favorite head of all time, uh, just let me know. But uh, this has been through it all. It's starting to get flexible and, and flimsy on me. So if it does break, uh, I'll probably switch over to the Halifax head if no one picks it up. Um, or maybe do another Nighthawks head. I don't know. I just don't want to get rid of this. This is my favorite stick I, I think I've ever used. So, Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoy. I know it's going to be a lengthy video. So many things to show off and uh, talk about and a little backstory to pretty much everything. So, Let me know down below what your guys' favorite head of all time is, as well as what kind of videos you guys want to see, whether it's lacrosse-related, life-related. Uh, I'm going to do whatever. you know. So, For the third time, like uh, you all know, I don't know how to end a video, so... Thanks for watching. Uh, subscribe if you haven't. I'm close to 10K, which is wild. I never thought I'd get to that point. Um, just goes to show how much I, I cared about my YouTube video the last, my YouTube channel the last year. But coming back as strong as possible, doing whatever you guys want to see. So there you go.